All right, all right. Greetings. Uh, my name is Ryan Groney. I'm, I'm a uh, former United States Marine and I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes while serving in the Marine Corps in 1993. Now, since my diagnosis, um, the government and I've been told nothing but lies about diabetes uh, by the government, by the mainstream medical establishment, um, by the pharmaceutical industry, and the lies have to stop. So um, the title of this video is how I found out about uh, Dr. Bernstein, Dr. Richard K. Bernstein. And um, a, a friend asked me that tonight. and. Um, so I thought I would do a little bit, little video and show you guys how, how it was that I found out about Dr. Bernstein. Um, for those of you who don't know who that is, uh, Dr. Bernstein is a 83 year old type one diabetic. Uh, he was diagnosed, uh, in the forties, uh, with type one diabetes. I think he was 12 years old. And by the time he was uh, in his late thirties, he was dying. Um, he had developed a number of complications. Um, and, uh, and despite, um, what he was being told by his doctors, he knew that he was in trouble. So, uh, Dr. Bernstein, um, and he was an engineer at the time. Uh, he, uh, wondered whether or not exercise could, um, re uh, di diabetics could reverse their complications with exercise. And, uh, that was back before Google. So um, Al Gore hadn't invented the internet yet, but um, so but, but while he was doing this search uh, through uh, the medical literature, what he found was that uh, normal blood sugars could reverse uh, diabetes, at least in animals. So uh, he theorized, well, if it could be done in animals, then it, you know it could be done uh, in humans, possibly at least. And so um, he, uh, and then uh, he became the first diabetic to start monitoring his own blood sugars. Um, this is before meters were available to uh, the public or to patients. Um, but his, his wife was a doctor already and uh, he was able to get one. Um, she was able to get a, a, one of the very first blood glucose meters for him. So uh, he, he took this meter, he started um, generating data and he um, analyzed the data, and what he found was that he, that that he could he could get closer to normal blood sugars. He could get uh, less fluctuation in his blood sugars, and he could get them uh, closer to a, a, a lower number uh, if he reduced the amount of carbohydrate in his diet. Now, this is something that people that had a pretty good idea of already that there was some connection between. Uh, carbohydrate consumption and the onset of and the exacerbation of, of diabetes. Um, but this was the first time somebody was able to put in, put some real data and real numbers to it. Um, uh, he was a, a eventually able to completely monitor or normalize his own blood sugars. His diabetic comp complications reversed most of them. Um, and um, he later went on to become a, a medical doctor and now he, uh, and he's written a book called Diabetes Solution, uh, The Complete Guide to Normal Blood Sugars. And uh, he uh, describes a method in that book for blood sugar normalization. And the thousands uh, of us uh, use that method um, to uh, get normal or near normal blood sugars for ourselves. And um, so Dr. Bernstein is, um, it's really a remarkable story, and he, um, and, uh, he, uh, there's a lot of us out there that feel like we owe our lives to him, and, um, are, are very grateful for, uh, the work that he's done over the years. So, um, so this is how I found out, um, about Dr. Bernstein. So in the, uh, Fall of 2011, my glycated hemoglobin A1C uh, was 11.2%, and that's a measure of the percentage of hemoglobin cells that have become damaged by 
that, that, that become damaged by uh, elevated blood sugars. So it's it's normal for for a, you know, a small percentage of those uh, to be damaged, but uh, it's um, but the, the higher that number gets, the 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 higher your blood sugars are. It actually reflects an average the the percentage the H, HbA1c percentage actually reflects an average of uh, blood sugar. So um, basically, um, I was uh, in a, a similar boat. Uh, in some ways, I was maybe worse off. I was homeless. I was uh, I lost a toe. I had um, ulcers on both my feet. There were these open bleeding sores on my feet that diabetics get when their blood sugars are out of control. And uh, I was starting to have some other problems too. So I knew that I was like, I knew that I needed to get, I needed to figure it out. So, um, and basically um, I'd been hearing a lot. I, people would ask me, um, you know, doctors and nurses and, you know, whoever, they'd be like, well, is your is is your are your blood sugars under control or are your blood sugars well controlled? And and, and I would be like, and when people would ask me that, I would be like, well, what does that even mean? What 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 does that mean? And it means well, and nobody would be able to to like be able to to give a, a reasonable answer to that question. It was like it was just it was like it was one of those things where. It was just like a platitude that they would spout spout out. So I knew that the A1C, um, I knew what it was. Um, I knew that 11.2 percent was way too high. Um, but I wanted to know, I wanted to know what normal was and and um, whether or not there was any any benefit. Uh, or what was what was a good number for a diabetic to have as far as A1C goes? So, um, I didn't feel like I was getting very straight answers from from pretty much anybody. So, I went to the I went to the library, and basically there's this li library in downtown Phoenix, and there's this there's this retaining wall out in front of the library, and a walk in front of the library. And I would sleep on the retaining wall at night. And I would get up in the mornings and I would uh, go into the library and I would do research. So uh, my first question, so my first question was, you know, like, what is normal blood sugar? And um, so, or what, what, what's, a, what's a, a number, what's a well-controlled number for a diabetic to have? And like I said, I wasn't getting very good answers, so what I did was... And of course, this number seven was popping up a lot, and I was aware that there was some sort of controversy. I didn't know whether it was um, how significant it was, um, whether it was one of those things where it was a faux controversy, where you know. So, but I, I wanted to know, you know, what was, what did A one C? How did it convert into average blood sugar? Okay, and what was like? What did the seven correlate with? So I went into the library and I did a search, a Google search. And uh, this, will, this will kind of show you how um, internet, internet censorship is real. Because when you do a search, and it's getting worse. Unfortunately, it's not getting better, it's getting worse. So I Googled... Um, a1C conversion. Okay. And at this point I'd never heard I'd never heard of Dr. Bernstein. So now on the on the first page of the, the Google search results now, um, they've got the American Diabetes Association is, is, of course, always at the top of the page. They still are, and they were at the time. Um, but now the the whole entire first page is just covered with ADA, AccuCheck. Why doesn't my average blood sugar match my A1C? Well, <laughs> um, A1C average glucose calculator. And all of these, all these results on the front, on the first page, are, are, are this, use the same formula. Okay. 
Now, back then, and this was in 2012, this uh, website right here, I'll show you here in a second, wow, it really dropped. This, this website right here, www.ragin.net, um, it was like the third result on the first page, and now it's dropped all the way down almost to the bottom of the second page. So, um, they were already trying to hide it. Um, they just had, they hadn't like, but now they've got it dialed in. I guess they got their, the SEO, the AccuCheck people have their SEO dialed in and, and, and the, um, and the ADA and all the other establishment sources. But this is what this is what I found. I mean, obviously, I did go to to the the American Diabetes Association. They had something like this, and I guess now they're calling EAG slash A one C conversion calculator. And it says here the ADA is recommending the use of a new term in diabetes management: estimated average glucose or EAG. Well, gee, thanks ADA. Thanks for giving us permission to convert. A1C to average glucose. I'm so glad that we're able to, that we have your permission to do that now. But anyway, as you can see here, um, a 7%, and like I, I had heard this number over and over, um, according to this formula, correlates to a, a average blood sugar of 154 milligrams per deciliter. And, um, well, I mean, I just, well, that's not normal. Okay, so and they, they use this formula. The rela it's about twice normal, and so they use this uh, formula. The relationship between A1C and e EAG is described by the formula: twenty-eight point seven times A1C minus forty-six point seven equal EAG. So, And then they've got and they've got some other values here. They've got six, six and a half, seven. So, but I, 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 I like I said, I already knew that the American Diabetes Association that there was some controversy, and that they're like that. I didn't know. I wasn't a hundred percent. I wanted to see the same. I wanted to see the same thing over and over and over again. Okay, so uh, I pulled up the Ragin.net, and I don't know who this Elliot Tussier is, uh, or Alice Tessier is. I mean, I really don't know. Sometimes I think it might be like Dr. Bernstein is trolling us, because he's a little, because this guy is a little bit off, but he like he speaks really highly of Dr. Bernstein. So this was the first I'd ever heard of Dr. Richard K. Bernstein. Now, if you look at the values on their chart, um, we'll go over to 7%, right here, 172. So, now, I mean, obviously, I don't know who Dr. Bernstein is. I definitely don't know who Alice Toussier is. Obviously, this is a homemade website. But, I... Um, I scroll down a little bit more just because it's interesting. I mean, it's an anomaly. Okay, this 7 equals 172 isn't the same as this. So somebody's like, somebody's formula isn't like, isn't right. Okay. And it should be noted that, that whenever you're converting A1C to average blood sugar, it's like it's not a it's not a hundred percent exact science. But anyway, there's a pretty significant difference between these two formulas. Um, so I scroll down, I get down to, to this part, and it says the table to convert HbA1c to mean plasma glucose is based on the following formulas. So this guy's formula is HbA1c times 35.6 minus 77.3. So, and that's like, that doesn't yield the same values. 
it I, the, the the higher the higher the A1C gets, the the more it understates the actual correlation. So that seemed interesting to me. Um, so, so I kept on reading, and uh, I got I got down to this part. Well, I can't find it right now, but this whole this this guy just rambles on and on, and it, it's pretty interesting. Um, but he does cite uh, Dr. Bernstein. And, um, this is a great quote. Other doctors say my inter interpretation of blood sugars is too strict, but I have no other choice. Nothing else works. Now, he attributes that to Dr. Bernstein. He certainly has said similar things like that. I don't know whether he actually said that or not. Or, like I said, I, I don't know who this guy is. But, this, uh... This whole this whole spiel that this guy writes is about how um, the 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 recommendations at the A1C of of seven percent is um, is dangerously high, and that you're you're going to get the complications. Your complications, if you already have them, are going to get worse uh, if you're if you're keeping your blood sugars that high. So the so that that's so down here is the is the actual formula, and as you can see, it's different, and it yields different values. Now, this is what I was. The, this is what um, gave this credibility to me. It says the formulas were calculated by linear regression analysis, which is a mathematical way to predict a point based on known points. The data was obtained by analyzing the results from one thousand four hundred thirty-nine subjects enrolled in the Diabetic Control and Complications trial. Correlation between HbA1c and mean uh, glucose is not perfect, but rather only 0.81. One would be a straight line, which has perfect correlation. So, and then it goes on and on uh, to say that, yeah, this is like, this is just kind of an estimate. So, um, you know, and, and that's like something that, that's fact checkable. Okay, for, for one thing, I can see if I can see I, I can you know do some research on the DCCT and see if um, and see if like if this methodology was really de developed there if this was like but I mean he describes the methodology he uh, says where he gets the data from and you know and he you know and it's credible so. Uh, whereas on the American Diabetes Association, um, they they give the formula, but they don't. They, it doesn't say anything about uh, you know how they arrived at this conclusion that twenty eight point seven times a one c minus forty six point seven equals eag. So, but then, but the real mystery here. For me, the, the really intriguing part was who was this Dr. Bernstein? Okay, so okay, so first of all, you know, you you always wonder is is this guy is he like a, a doctor of psychology or is he a doctor of political science or, or what kind of a doctor is he? So I Google Richard Bernstein. And this is really, this is a travesty. Oh my God, American lawyer. I know that's not the right Richard Bernstein, is it? Let's see, what's, what's this guy? Oh, he's a Supreme Court justice, okay. Uh, CEO of some investment. Yeah, I mean, like, okay, so, okay, so here, I guess he is on the front page now under a generic Richard Bernstein search. But I didn't get it, so let's try this. I, I wasn't getting the right result. I could tell that I wasn't getting the right result. 
Okay, so I'm impressed because it used to be like some doc, some orthopedic specialist, or you, you know, I mean, because there's probably a thousand Richard Bernstein's that are doctors in this country, and it used to be when you when you Google it, it would be uh, Richard Bernstein. Uh, you had you had to put in Richard K. Bernstein to get the right Richard Bernstein. So, so now I know. So now, looking at this, you know, you can see if the, if he's a physician. Okay, and I mean, obviously, you like you always got to dig a little bit just to make sure this is MD. That's it. That's his book. This is his website. And there's the Wikipedia, and I like. Sometimes I'll look at a Wikipedia just if I want to get a real quick grasp on that established or the you know the the spun establishment view on on something or someone but mostly i skip over wikipedia so here's a, a tribute to richard k bernstein medical pioneer a famous is famous as a champion of a strict low of strict low carb eating and a controversial figure whose name often sparks debate So, I, so he's a doctor. He, he's a legitimate doctor. And I figured, well, if this guy is still practicing medicine, and he's been doing it since forever, he's been doing it for years, and he hasn't been he hasn't been kicked out yet. Even though there's something totally different about what this guy's saying compared to what these guys are saying, if he hasn't been if he hasn't been sued out of business yet then he still has a license to practice medicine, then it's okay for me to go ahead and start to take a little bit closer look at uh, what he's all about and whether these claims that you can reverse complications, diabetic complications with normal blood sugars, are actually real or not. So um, that's how I found out about Dr. Bernstein. And uh, I'm out of time, so I'll, if you like this video, I'll give it a thumbs up, share it, Subscribe to my channel. Thanks.